What's up everybody? So for those of you who watch my videos regularly, regularly, you know that I have been incarcerated before. I've talked about it before. Um, I was incarcerated from 2000 to 2006. And every now and again, uh, one of my followers, you know, people or anybody, whoever watches my videos, they'll be like, oh, you should do, uh, talk more about, you know, your prison stories, you know, things that happen to you in prison. Because I normally don't. I normally don't talk about that stuff. Just just cuts. I just I don't I don't think it's very interesting. I guess some people do. But anyhow, so today I am gonna provide you with a prison story. So I was incarcerated from 2000 to 2006. And this story is about how I got or why I got punched in the face for trading pants with a black person. So obviously, um, you know, why why would that happen? Why would that go down? So this happened in the year 2000. Like I said, I got locked up in 2000. It happened in 2000 while I was still in county jail. Um, the way this, the the system goes, when you first get arrested, you go to county jail, you fight your case there, and then once you get convicted, you go to prison. So I was still in county jail at this point, still fighting my case, basically. And it's important to note that in both jail and prison in California, it's racially segregated. Okay? And the second thing to note, because I've been asked this before too, is the segregation is done by the inmates, not by the officers. So this is not the state of California or anything telling you, oh, you know, you can only do things with your race. No, it's the inmates segregating themselves. It's not the officers doing it. It's the inmates doing it to themselves. Okay, so what I mean by racially segregated is basically from... The, the time you go in, whether you're in a cell or a dorm, you're going to be either in a cell or a dorm with a person of your race. You're going to eat with a person of your race. You're going to um, shower sometimes because the showers are communal. Sometimes, you know, there's two, three, four or more people in a shower together. But you're going to shower with your own race. Um, you're going to play cards or uh, do other activities, work out with your race, do everything with your race. For the most part. I'm not going to get too much in that. But it's just important to know that it is racially segregated in uh, jails and prisons in California. Okay? And because it's racially segregated, there's rules about that segregation. Okay? Now, there's like sub-level of segregation too. Okay, so it's, it's segregated by race, but it's also segregated by, kind of like by gangs too. So say with black people, for example. I, I don't know. I'm not black. So I don't know exactly how it works, but I do know, you know, blacks have bloods and crips. And so they may segregate themselves by that too. Like say there's a black guy who's a blood. He might decide to only be in a cell with a blood or a, a crip with a crip, right? So it's the same thing with Hispanics too. So I ran with Hispanics and Hispanics are basically subdivided into three categories in California prisons. The northerners... The Southerners, or, yeah, Northerners, Southerners, or Southsiders, as they're sometimes called, and then also Pisces, okay? So Pisces are basically Mexicans that are from Mexico. They either came over the border, they're here illegally, they're just, they're, they're, they're waiting on, um, what do you call it, a deportation, but, you know, they have to do their time here for something like that. But anyhow, Pisces are Mexicans from Mexico, okay? And then uh, Southsiders, basically, if you div if you divided California right in the middle, or thereabouts, all the gang members from Southern California are the Southsiders, all the gang members from Northern California are the Northerners, okay? And so... Pretty much the Pisces kind of get along with everybody, I, I believe. Okay, but the Northern and Southern um, Hispanics, Chicanos. Chicanos is like Amer <laughs> you know, See, this is why I don't like telling stories about prison because it's like I have to explain. It's I have, I have explained what this means, and then I you know I start telling the story. And, okay, I explain what that means, you know. So you don't have to go because someone's gonna be like, well, what does that mean? Or what does this mean? Okay, and so you know Mexicans from Mexico are called Pisces. Okay, that's that's like. The nice term, okay? The word that you are more accustomed to, the, the derogatory word, is wetback, okay? That's the offensive term for someone from Mexico, okay, is wetback. The, the, the nice term, what, what Mexicans from Mexico sometimes refer to each other, is paisa. It's kind of like, you know, your buddy, your paisa, uh, you know, your fellow countrymen, whatever, okay? And now Mexicans that are born in the United States... 
generally called Chicanos. Chicano is Chicano technically means I think like half breed, like me. I'm half Mexican, half white, right? So it could mean that, but generally, uh, Chicano is um, a Mexican born in the United States. Generally. Okay, so the northern and southerners are generally Chicano for the most part. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to get too because I'm 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 getting away from the story. The reason all this is important is because because it's racially segregated, and it's also segregated in the subdivision. Okay, you can't do certain things with certain people. Okay, so the Southsiders, that's who I ran with. Our rules were we can't do anything with black people. And we can't do anything with the Northerners, also called called Nortenios. Can't do anything with them either, okay? And so, like I said, um, that includes everything. So, as far as with the, with the Blacks, for example, you don't play cards with them or play chess with them or, you know, uh, you don't work out with them. You don't shower with them because showers are, are sometimes communal in, in jail and in prison. So, you don't do anything with the Blacks. You know, um, the rules vary from prison to prison, but you don't do anything with the blacks. I mean, some are are, are so strict that you can't use the same water fountains as, as the blacks. Um, just like anything. You just don't do anything with them at, at all whatsoever. Racially segregated. It's like it's like you go back to the 1950s in, in the United States. It's like that. It's racially segregated. Okay? But with the northerners and the southerners... It's, it's not just a segregation. It's like an enemy thing. It's like two different gangs, basically, if you want to think like that. Okay? And so so that's the rules. And, 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 and if you go to jail, you either find out really fast that those are the rules or, you know, like me, I kind of knew. Well, I mean, I did know the general rules beforehand, right? Okay? So I knew the jail, prison was segregated. You know, I knew, you know... That, you know, I'm a Southern Hispanic. We don't do stuff with the Northern Hispanics. I knew all that stuff, right? Okay, I knew all that stuff. But I didn't know the intricate details of what you are not supposed to do with the blacks. Okay? So, you know, I know you don't eat with them. You don't work out with them. All that kind of stuff, right? But I didn't know. Nobody told me. They also not... I, I, oh, keep in mind, I was only 18 at this time. This was in 2000. I was only 18 at the time. Right? So I'm, I'm learning at this time right so i didn't know that you also weren't supposed to trade clothes with black people either i didn't know that i knew all the other stuff i didn't know that right so sure enough um when when you go to jail they issue you clothes because you don't you know um in in jail and prison in the united states it's not like some other countries where you just continue to wear your uh, you know your street clothes your civilian clothes they give you um prison garb or jail garb they give you jumpsuit or whatever either orange or i mean it's different colors for different states and cities and whatever but it's orange or blue or green or whatever colors but they give you a jumpsuit right and since it's jail this is not they're not a tailor it's not like they're they're like oh let's make sure to get your size and you know your dimensions and all that or you a 1x or a 2x the guards don't care about anything about that it's like take off your civilian clothes and they throw a jump suit at, uh, um, at you and it's like if it fits, it fits, right? And so they did that for me. I got my jumpsuit when I went into jail. And sure enough, it didn't fit too good. Um, the pants that they gave me were too long. And I think they were a bit too tight, the pants that they gave me, right? And there was a, uh, another person, a black guy, right? Who I, I met later when I went into the... I was in the dorm at that time, not in cells. There was a black guy. He was taller than me thinner and they gave him pants that were too short and i think maybe a little bit too big right so he was a cool guy you know i was a cool guy and you know we just thought logically hey your clothes don't fit my clothes don't fit but you know you do vice versa my clothes would fit you your clothes would fit me let's just trade pants right thought it was innocuous but it wasn't so we did that we traded um we traded pants you know i gave him mine he gave me his and um we both, me and that, it was me and a black guy, and we went about our own ways, right? And like a couple hours later, I was sitting on my bunk, and all of a sudden, this other Southsider guy came up to me, him and two other gang member guys, but the 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 biggest guy is the one who said something to me. And mind you, I'm I, I'm five foot eleven, 
I'm not very small, but um, this guy was bigger than me. This guy was definitely at least six foot something, well over my weight. And he had been incarcerated a while, so he was more athletic, uh, you know, bigger guy there, right? Anyhow, he came up to me, and I, I'm trying to remember what he said exactly. It's just something along the lines of, hey, you were uh, trading with the blacks. And then it, it took me off guard because in my mind, you know, I was like, no, trading with the blacks because I knew it was wrong to trade food with him or, you know, other stuff. I didn't even, it, like, it didn't even dawn on me at, uh, about the clothes at the time. But while I'm sitting here, you know, thinking about this in my head for this couple of seconds, he says, this, hey, he said something, blah, 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 you're trading with the blacks. And then pow, just straight, just punched me right in my face. Just punched me right in my face. Total. And I was, I was like, I was out for a second, like on my feet. I think I was sitting down, but I was still like out. And by the time like I came to, he was gone and his goons were gone. And I'm sitting there just trying to figure out what's going on. It finally dawned to me what he was talking about trading with the blacks, right? And I was like, oh, apparently you're not supposed to train. And I'm thinking in my head, apparently not supposed to trade clothes with black people, right? And... That was that was it. So the reason for that, that's called, or back then, it was called getting checked, right? I believe now they call it DP, I believe. I don't even know what that means. I've heard people use that term recently, DP. But back then, it was called getting checked. I don't, I don't know what it's called nowadays. But that basically means, like, getting checked in gang terms means that, you know, if you're any kind of gang or, you know, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a gang member in that sense, but, you know, I was affiliated with the south side so you know i was subject to their rules right um what was i gonna say i forgot what i was gonna say um so so in gang terminology checked means it's like you knew the rules you didn't follow the rules and so this is like like a warning being checked is like a warning like hey don't do that anymore right and so that was it that was you know i knew that was my warning and then now when something like that happens you obviously have a few options, right? You could one do do the 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 six nine route and be like, well, screw this, I'm telling on everybody, right? And then you you know you go down that path. But back then, even though 2000 wasn't that long ago, you know, telling back then will get you killed. S you know, six by nine, he uh, or six nine, the the rapper guy, he's been able to skirt whatever you know ramifications for him telling. But back in 2000. There was not so much skirting, you know, ramifications of telling, you know. And so I didn't want to be a snitch. Not just because I didn't want to uh, get killed or beat up more. I just, it just would never cross my mind. So, so that's one option. It's like, okay, well, they did this to me. I could go tell the cops and, you know, they, they call it uh, PC and up in jail. That means you go into protective custody and you're going to tell and all this kind of stuff. And I didn't, I definitely didn't go that route whatsoever, right? Um, the other option is you could say, well, screw that. I'm going to go get that guy back either go beat him up myself or go you know stab him or whatever right that's kind of you know the natural logical thing that's something you would do on the street you know as a civilian hey somebody punches you oh, i'm gonna punch him back right but in gang culture you don't do that especially when you're getting checked it's like you're being punished for breaking the rules if i attempted to go even just fight that guy regardless he could say i went to go find him he beat me up again regardless just me like push an issue when i was wrong i would just get more punishment they, again they would beat me up worse the second time or kill me or whatever so if i attempt to go get revenge say i just like oh, screw that i'm gonna go stab that guy forget it and say i did kill him say i killed him or whatever it's not like that's the end of it no i was initially in the wrong for trading with blacks as they said and so even if i got my revenge on that guy they would just eventually kill me anyways. So that's option two. So option one is I could have just been a, a sissy and just go tell. That has obviously its own problems. Uh, and option two is try to, to, to get some kind of payback. Also has own problems. Option three is you just learn uh, from your mistakes, take your punishment, and go on about your life. And that's what I did. Option three. So now the problem is I got punched in the face by a big old six foot something guy. And so I have this big old, I, think, I don't know if he broke my nose or not, but like my eye, at the very least, my eye was very bruised and, you know, bubbly, whatever. I was obviously hit, right? And the guards don't like that. The guards, they like to know exactly what's going on, who's fighting, who's doing this and that, right? And so 
eventually they come around, they do counts and all that kind of stuff. And they're like, oh, what happened to your face? This and that, right? And so the rule of thumb, if you either get into a fight or if you get checked or something like that where you have an obvious um, wound and you're trying to hide it, you just say you fell down. That's, that's what you say. So you, you obviously don't want to tell, but you obviously have a mark. So, you, you know, they're not, the guard's not stupid. You have a mark. They want to know where the mark came from. And so you say, oh, I just, I fell down. It's like, oh, you fell down in the shower or something like that. That's what you're supposed to say. And that's it. So the guards, hey, what happened to your face? Oh, you were fighting somebody? Or, you know, did you get checked? Because the guards, they know what's up, right? And you're like, no, I just, I fell down. I fell down the stairs. I fell down the shower. You make something up basically where you're not telling anybody. You just basically tell it on yourself. Well, I, I'm stupid. I fell down, right? And that's what I did. And so, you know, I took the punishment, um, and then I learned, you know, just don't do that, right? Now, the bad part of all that, and this is in, this is a whole other reason of why jail and prison are messed up, especially in California, is because even if you go in there into jail or prison and you're not racist, you don't want to be segregated, you, you know, you don't mind training with black people or white people or Hispanic people or whatever it is, it'll make you racist or it'll make you uh, reluctant to do it, right? And that's basically what happened to me. So, you know, obviously I didn't want to get punched anymore or killed or anything like that, right? And I'm a Southsider anyway, or I was at that time. You know, I'm saying what at that time when I'm thinking in my head, like, you know, hey, I'm a Southsider. I want to abide by the rules, you know? And so... I was already willing to abide by the normal rules of, like I said, not eating with the blacks or, you know, the, the northerners or the enemies, all that kind of stuff, right? And so, I, you know, I didn't want to go against the rules. And I also didn't want to keep, how you say, like, because it's, like it's not like anybody comes up to you in jail or prison and they give you a list like, oh, these are precisely, you don't do this, you don't do that. No one gives you a precise list of rules. It's just like... In general, you don't trade with the blacks. You don't work out with them, this and that, you know? But like I said, no one ever told me you're not supposed to trade clothes with them. And so in my mind, I'm like, from now on, I just know, don't trade anything with them. I don't care if it's clothes. I don't care if it's a pack of ramen. Nothing at this point, right? And then it also made me more reluctant to communicate in any fashion with black people whatsoever because I didn't want to stumble upon something else that I, 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 I didn't know that was wrong. And so, you know, I didn't want to say, oh, like, say I see a, a black dude. Hey, I didn't, say was, I, I didn't want to be like, oh, hey, what's up, man? Or, you know, it could be something as simple as, like, shaking their hand or, like, a fist bump or something like that. You might think it's innocuous and then someone else be like, hey, you know, why are you, um, like, mingling with the black people, right? Seriously, I know that's crazy, but that's how it is. It's crazy as... You ask anyone who's been locked up, especially in California, that's how it is. Depending on what jail or prison you go to, the rules are the rules. And if they say, basically, they, basically they don't want you to have any interaction with them. And so you don't, right? And so I didn't, right? And so I didn't for basically the entire six years that I was there. And like I said, so so the, the, the unintentional, I guess, adverse consequence of that is you kind of, uh, I want to say inadvertently or non-willingly become racist. And it's not like that I began to hate black people after that. It's just that you become so detached from never having any interactions with them that you kind of become um, indifferent about anything that happens with them whatsoever. So say, for example, for example, say, say three, four years down the line, and I'm in prison somewhere, right? And say there's a black guy. And this 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 literally happened, right? There's a black guy and he's hungry. I know that he doesn't have, you know, he doesn't get money on his books. And they don't really feed you a lot uh, in, in jail or prison. So he doesn't have a lot of food. He's hungry. He's really thin. He's hungry. And he just wants a ramen, a soup. You know, ramen is a big thing in prison. And he's like, hey, hey, hey Matt, can I get a ramen? I wouldn't want to give him a ramen, not because I have anything against him whatsoever, but because, like I said, that's the rules. I don't want to continue to face the consequences. 
And it's literally something as simple as in some jails or, or prisons, especially the higher level prisons, it could be something as simple as like, hey, why are you, you know, doing any kind of dealings with the blacks or whatever? Why why did you give them a soup? You can't be, oh, well, he was hungry. They don't care about that. They don't care about that. You, I'm telling you, and I know this is racist, and it is. That's the thing. It's racist. And that was, you know, like I said, I got out in 2006. I'm assuming it's still the same. I don't know. But that's how it is. And, you know, when, so when people are telling you don't go to jail or don't go to prison, it's because a lot of the rules in there are really, really messed up. Either the guards' rules or the inmates' rules, sometimes they're really messed up. And it's going to go against totally against things that you believe in or things, you know, things that you wouldn't want to do or whatever. Like I said, you, you want to go in there and maybe you're not racist, but it, you, you're forced into segregation. That's just it. And so for the next six years of my life, I was just forced into segregation. I definitely wasn't trading clothes with any black person anymore, you know. But like I said, there was even times where, you know, because like say there was a fellow Southsider, he wanted a ramen. Oh, yeah, no problem. That's actually almost a rule. It's like, hey, you know, you're supposed to help your people. Or even if it was a paisa, you know, oh, hey, he wants a ramen, whatever. And even with the white guys, as Southsiders, we're totally allowed to trade and, and play cards and do stuff with the white guys, 100% shower with them eat with them work out with them everything with the white guys but not with the blacks that was the rules so anyhow so yeah i learned i learned very very early on because like i said i was still in county jail you know just certain things you don't do and you know i'm telling you this from the perspective of a hispanic person of at that time south side right you know not that i'm uh retired or whatever you want to call it i'm just not into that anymore um but you would get the same perspective if you talk to a black guy who did prison time he would tell you the same thing he's like he'd tell you say yeah that's how it is you know um his, his black people told him the same thing you know you work out on our workout equipment you eat at the tables we eat at you know you're in a cell or in a, in a dorm bed with you know another black person um Everything. The games you play, whether it's chess or Scrabble or cards or dominoes or whatever, you play with other black people. A black guy would tell you the same thing. White people would tell you the same thing. That's the rules. So, yeah. So, that's that's how how and why I got punched in the face for trading pants. Just for trading a pair of pants with a black person. And that's also why I do not miss jail or prison whatsoever. Like I said, I got out in 2006 and now it's been however many years 17 years or whatever i have no interest in going back so there you go thank you for watching i'll see you guys next video